Hey guys, I'm just giving you a small preview of how the system is before I tear it apart, which, I, which is what this video is about. I'm making a, a few different changes to the build. So for the next uh, about a minute or so here, I'm just giving you guys a preview of how the system looks before I take it apart. If you notice, the coolant is low. I didn't bother uh, filling up completely because I knew I was going to make these changes. So. I just left it as is for the time being and I'm going to go ahead and then uh, in, in the next uh, minute or so here we're going to start the show and get this thing updated. Okay, uh, got a few things to unbox for you today, and uh, I bought all this stuff to make some proper uh, updates to the PC. So first thing up, we have the BitsPower CPU block. to uh, heat killer uh, 7970-7950 video cards uh, blocks video blocks video card uh, blocks so I got the uh, full nickel uh, versions along with the back plates And I actually have uh, two 7950 cards that I'm going to be uh, putting these on. Uh, first thing up, let's start with the Bits Power CPU block. You guys have to forgive my voice. Uh, I am properly, properly uh, sick right now. So it's going to be going to try and uh, get through this here. I didn't really want to wait till uh, till later to shoot this. So let me get the camera and focus. Come on, come on, come on. Just a little more. There we go. CPU block, of course, I, uh, I got it for the uh, Intel 2011. And there she is. Get out this bag. And what I got was the acrylic, uh, all acrylic version which is now stuck in the bag. Um, got the yellow color version because I actually wanted to put some lights. I have some lights I want to put in the block. So I have some lights I wanted to put in the block. And you see it on the side there. They actually do have, uh, if you uh, take a look here, if 
not getting the shot right. I'm still getting used to uh, filming. If you take a look, there's some holes for lights right there. And they're on both sides. So, and, uh, and I think I pointed the wrong bump sorry, here, right there. Holes for the lights. Mm -hmm. And they're on both sides, top and uh, bottom. And I'm, that's going to look real nice when I, my cooler is flowing through and it's all lit up. I believe it's 5mm LEDs. I believe that's the, the size they take. And this is actually a uh, big block. My goodness. It looks uh, quite bigger than it did in the picture. Which it serves just right because the CPU is going on. It's quite big. <laughs> so there you have it. I'm leaving the sticker on the back here. I don't want to peel it off just yet until I'm ready to use it. So I'm leave down the back. Uh, and that's uh, just it's just a little protective sticker that uh, covers the actual block the surface of the block itself. And let me not have it shining in the light like that. Thank you, Gabe. There we go. <laughs> I'm blind to you guys. Uh, just a little warning. But we don't care about that. We know that's good. We like the look of the block. That's what we like. Look at the block. Got your Bits Power logo. You can see that. There we go. Got your Bits Power logo right there. And, uh, of course the four screws, if you're so inclined, you can uh, take these screws out and change the little plate inside if you uh, feel so inclined to do that. Uh, actuality, hardly enough, on, um, on the Mayhem's Coolant website, there is a page on that site that does tell you that uh, it may cost you a few degrees but it's more preferred to pretty much remove as many obstructions as possible uh, out the loop in order to uh, have a better performance of the uh, coolant and better flow. And on, for certain coolants, they do recommend you going as far as taking the actual plate out and leaving it out uh, during the use of the coolant it will cost you a few degrees in uh, performance, but it will make sh it will uh, better help the mixture of coolant uh, perform well as it's in the uh, loop. I won't be doing all that. Uh, the plate, where well, the plates that are out, doesn't won't really affect much for my uh, purposes because I have a premixed coolant that I even if I didn't have premixed coolant, that is that that kind of extreme uh, measurements and which I would call extreme measurements not like it's truly difficult but when it comes to down to uh, removing your your plate inside here I would call it extreme measurements just it, it is really that uh, when you're taking those kind of extreme measurements it's really only for um, crazy 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 coolant such as the Aurora coolant which if you're in a, if you're building a personal build, that cool is not really meant to be in that build. It's not meant to be in any build actually for longer than maybe uh, 24 hours or so uh, running. I know people uh, who actually have in there have it in there like regular coolants, and it's kind of risky to do that because it can sit somewhere in your loop uh, and pretty much just fall apart while it's inside the loop. And we don't need none of that at all. <laughs> but this is the uh, Bits Power uh, Summit EF Intel uh, 2011 acrylic top block. And let's um, move on here. There's a bunch of other stuff in here, like, uh, of course, uh, back plates. Things. Those are things you guys are not all interested in. You know it comes with the every yeah, CPU block. You're gonna get the CPU block. You're gonna get the uh, the back uh, little back plate, but back mounts. I should say CPU mounts that you will need. Any screws, all that comes in that package. 
will I actually get this back into the bag? You know what? I'm not even going to try. Let's just put that in there. Close her up. Now let's move on to the video blocks, video card blocks. There's the rest of the, this the uh, rest of the packet of that same stuff I was just talking about. The extra screws, the uh, manual. Screws and manual. I'll pull them up quickly here. And you get, uh, oh, they actually say Arctic Silver. Huh. I didn't know that could become uh, come packaged with a CPU block. That's pretty nice, actually. So they uh, send you uh, Arctic Silver, <laughs> a small figure of Arctic Silver. It's, uh, here's all your screws, a little uh, screw head, a uh, little, um, Jesus, a little hex tool here to un undo the uh, block. Maybe if you want to clean it, change your ring. Uh, these things, for things like this, uh, you will need to undo the uh, block, pull it apart so you can change your ring. A lot of people like to do that um, when they when they get the block brand new, simply because they don't trust the, uh, the O-rings that come with it. And they just want to be a little more safe, want to have a little bit of uh, assurance that the ring, the O-ring inside there is brand new and it will work uh, better. And of course someone wants a block that just so happens to not have one in there because then it will be quite a mess. <laughs> a proper mess actually. I believe you can't see it but there's a... Uh, There we go. There's a Bits Power sticker right there. All right, and uh, Jesus. So okay, there we go. There. All right, and now let's move on to the video block. All right, uh, as I said before, I had the Heat Killer uh, 7970, 7950 heat sinks which comes in a very odd box that does not say heat killer at all just says made in Germany and watercool.d very strange it just says watercool on the front like can't get more raw than that but if you turn to the side and you will have heat killer uh, GPU 79X0, that's how they do that. And because of these, the box I got uh, in the mail was very heavy. And it looks like I did not take the time to think that there would be a uh, tape. Let me uh, grab this off quickly. Okay, you know what? Uh, grab something to probably cut this open. Hold on, guys. Okay. And we are back. I got myself a pair of uh, old trusty scissors. And now we can get into this thing properly without me struggling. I'm going to do the uh, razor knife soon. Okay. I'm going to just open one. I have two because I have two cards in the mail. And uh, I do have an uh, EK block on uh, my Sapphire 7950 and the only problem with that is well they don't really uh, have those anymore at the store I like to buy my blocks from all they have is the uh, the newer EK blocks now and there's nothing wrong with them uh, it's just I wanted to try a different design and you say you know what these heat color blocks look pretty awesome I wanted to just go and give them a try and this is the instructions just like you get with uh, pretty much any uh, video card block or CPU block you always get instructions read your instructions you're dealing with some expensive stuff equipment and Jesus Christ this is heavy Lord have mercy uh, this is the block let me get the get out the plastic here damn it's heavy I was expecting, uh, with it being nickel, I was expecting some weight, but honestly, I 
they know it'll be uh, probably probably that heavy. Almost seems like they should have gave you some support beams for your for your card after you put this thing on. Cause this is this is heavy. Uh, this is the GPU Heat Killer 7970 edition, 79 X0, made in Germany. I've never been to that country, but uh, if it looks anything like this block does, I'm pretty sure it's amazing. So, up top, I have a water cool. Uh, if I can put it in the focus, there we go. We have a uh, water cool. I guess in uh, water cool is actually uh, their preferred. I guess that's the, what they would call their logo. Or it's kind of strange you call everything heat killer, but then you have a uh, water cool everywhere. Which serves me just fine. Back of the block, my face, and what's he about to bug? And you see it's plenty, plenty shiny. Now the, the blocks don't really look like much uh, here out on their own. Uh, they just look very, very aesthetically pleasing. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, happily get these onto the uh, onto my cards and I'll definitely show you guys how they look uh, before I put them in the bill uh, on, the, on the cards. I have a Sapphire and an MSI 7950 only because the MSI was being sold locally and the Sapphire was not. I had to get it shipped from Newegg and I didn't really feel like weighing. Um, for a shipment, another shipment to come in because of the way I, the timing I had when I ordered them. So I already had the box on the way, and I had made a last minute decision to not wait longer to get a second video card and just got it on the whim. So, with that being said, I had to, if I want to use it anytime soon, I had to go ahead and uh, buy it locally instead of wait for it to come in from my. Uh, they preferred, preferred vendors. So uh, the local stores, like the local stores in my area, don't really have a lot of uh, great PC products. Not like online has. So my selections was very limited. So I ended up with uh, two different version uh, 7950 cards. Um, and we have here the black, the back plate, which will be on the card. And it looks nice, all ventilated and stuff. They say backplates are memory coolers. I've uh, pretty much uh, been around many, many forums, uh, even YouTube videos, reviewers, who all tell you that the backplate really doesn't help cool the car that much. Uh, the, the block is the main thing that cools the car. This backplate is really more for aesthetics. You can really do without it. And aesthetics is the reason I got two backplates because I really want to cover the backs. And especially you see as the PCBs of the uh, MSI and the Sapphire are two different colors. I'm going to go ahead and just cover the back. So this will help me do that. That's why I got it. <laughs> and of course it comes with more screws. So I'm thinking that uh, the screws that, that comes with the block I guess must be um, a little shorter. These will probably be a little longer to include the back plate as well. And of course you got your washer standoffs inside here. I don't want to open it right now because I don't want these things flying all over the darn place. Uh, standoffs, be sure to, to not to remember to put these in properly. These will help make sure that you're not bending your PCB when you're putting the, uh, the block or the back plate itself on. So just remember that and uh, like I said before read your instructions just because you're a pro at building computers doesn't mean you won't goof up from time to time so instead of allowing yourself to read your instructions and so you can uh, just get through easily and take your time pretty much yeah. all right now let me get on with uh powering on the computer draining it uh drain all the cooling out loads of stuff to do so let me get on to that and we will be back with uh, me putting it, putting the blocks on the card. Hopefully, we'll be back. All right, just showing you uh, the room is in chaos right now. I got stuff everywhere. This is a small room, very small room. This is actually all there is. Um, 
see you guys there on the screen and uh, TTL has a video of a uh, 2560 by 1440 ASUS monitor I don't want to miss a thing that's why I paused it over here though the star of the show up in maintenance has yeah, our boy right there got a blade on the side got everything drained out the coolant is actually over yeah. on my test bench if you want to call it a test bench it's a cheap ass uh, a cheap ass Walmart table actually so there's a Walmart folding table so <clears throat> I got loads of extra things that I'm going to be putting in this new fittings uh, tubing all kind of things you see my reservoir is down there now right there there it is reservoir down there now and uh, reservoir and pump as I'm going to do some work here I'm going to take all the take the cards out Take the MSI card out, which I need to bring you a little closer so you can see. There he is. A little, see it a little bit. There's the MSI card. All right. And I'm going to, uh, I already got the cables unplugged, all a bunch, a bunch of my extension, all my extension cables are unplugged. Got to unplug my CRTAs and all that. I'm pulling the board out because I'm putting blocks on that too. So, without further ado, let me get back to work and start up my TTL video over here. And uh, Tom is going to talk me through this. Not really talk me through this, but entertain me as I uh, do this work. All right. Back to work. Okay. Let's try and get this thing on here. I am not a professional uh, guy that I've like, done this a thousand times or nothing. I haven't. I gotta look around here on my screen because I don't know what bring my screen around because I can't see. I'm sorry guys, I cannot see. I'm trying to readjust my screen here a bit. I can't I can't see. Okay, that's better. Okay. Uh, Alright, back in the shop. Back to work. Okay. <clears throat> here we go. Alright, instructions say one's all over for these memories, two for the voltage do diggly things over there and the voltage thingies right here okay can't be that bad here got all my things oh I do not have my thermal paste don't worry don't worry not going nowhere got my little box right here where is my guy there is my guy I know there's a ton of different um, thermal paste. Uh, there's Arctic Silver, which you already saw me. It's in uh, the Bits Power box. I have uh, Phobia. Um, and I don't know. Uh, let me get this in the shot here. Phobia. There we go. I got Phobia. Uh, this is actually my primary uh, ones. I use it on my CPU now. I use it on my, car my cars. I use it on the Sapphire. When I had this, uh, had the uh, EK block on, so I had the EK block on. I used the uh, Phobia grease for that. Uh, even though the EK actually ships theirs with Gillette, which I had, which I've heard is a pretty decent one. Uh, Gillette grease is a pretty decent one. Um, so all that good stuff, but. Let me go ahead and I cannot stand. There we go. Um, Autofocus a bit here. And <laughs> so that is a pretty good one, but let's go ahead and get down to it. I'm going to continue to use my phobia, phobia grease. <laughs> and we're just going to uh, crack on with it. I was debating with actually cleaning off the uh, CPU heatsink completely and re-thermal grease and all that stuff but I'm not really changing the thermal grease at all and there's only minimal 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 um, performance gains as far as temperatures when uh, doing that 
and you're not actually changing to like a better grease or you're the, or you're just changing to a different grease in general you're not going to see much of any different temperatures if you're just using the same grease that you did before which is what I'm doing here so let's uh, keep going because my camera is uh, four minutes in because it can't record any longer than ten minutes or at least I don't know how to make it do that <laughs> so yeah I swear to the Lord that uh, I, uh, one thing I, I did not mention, these are pre-cut. They have pre-cut um, thermal paste, uh, thermal stickers, which is actually a very, very nice thing to do. I wish all manufacturers did that. EK does not do that. I have to cut it my damn self. Um, and I'm, it, it's, it's not so such a bad thing, but... It would be nice uh, if this was more of a standard. I really don't want to be bothered, honestly, with uh, cutting things. Just like I really don't want to be bothered with uh, getting this stupid sticker off. Okay, well, let me uh, continue fighting this thing and we get all this stuff. We get this uh, heat sink on and I will show you the end result. Okay. Okay. I am currently in the middle of installing the uh, heat killer heat sink on the last uh, GPU here. And let me get some clean uh Got my thermal. So my thermal got my yeah got my thermal remover working here. My Arctic. Uh, Arctic clean. Thermal remover, I'll have to clean a uh, thermal material manu manu bleh, remover. And of course, I'm about to follow it up with the uh, purifier. So, let's uh, get my, I got lots and lots and lots of paper towels over. Take this stuff here and clean off everything right now. Yeah, just take my time and go through. So this is the card that had uh, things. I do have something to say about the uh, about uh, this uh, about the heat killer heat sinks that's not not good at all. Uh, and I will address that in a little bit here. You guys just give me a little time, a little time, and get all this thermal paste off, and uh, I'll show you something. Just quickly here. Okay. Right. All right. Before I move on with this last, uh, matter of fact, uh, I'll wait till I get them all on here. All right. Now we're going to uh, throw the paste off. Let's get our purifier going. Purifier. Remember, you do this in two steps, two bottles. Uh, and it's just a few drops. Just a few drops in 30 seconds. And you know, you're done. So, some more paper towel. Give it a little while. You don't have to give it uh, the 60 seconds or sometimes not even really 30 seconds. Uh, looks like it's been on there uh, plenty good enough. And let's go ahead and get this stuff off. Yes, I'm using a paper towel. No, I don't have the uh, lint-free uh, cloth that actually comes with the Arctic Clean. It's somewhere in one of my boxes. Just don't have it. You don't really need it because it works just as well with the uh, paper towel. Alright, and when you're done, you know as you did your job, it doesn't take long and you have a very clean 
uh, PCB or oh, PCB very clean uh, CPU area. Look at that shine. Not perfect, but damn sure good enough. All right. Yeah. Let's continue on. <laughs> Just say continue on and he could uh, still in the box. Smart move, guys. Smart move. There we go. Excuse the lighting. We're using natural light. I don't have a uh, a lamp. You know, I don't know. I don't have a proper light as of yet. I am considering it, but these videos are not meant to be terribly serious. This is not going to turn into some uh, <laughs> big time channel or whatever. I, I don't have that kind of time. Uh, I just do things in my spare time for fun and as a hobby pretty much so this heat killer a second heat killer block and these things are fingerprint magnets uh, make sure you guys uh, remember that fingerprint magnets let's get out the other stuff and uh, here we get this uh, these things on because I am eager to get my system back up and running very very eager to do that and I cannot stress enough like I said before it is nice very nice to have pre-cut um, thermal pads for your memory and your uh, VRM. This is this is VRM for your power area. Well, one thing uh, it sucks, pre-cut or not, it sucks. Uh, sucks something awful to uh, get these little thin things off. It sucks something awful. Let me get these off, get them on, and uh, be right back. Okay, um, something I wanted to talk to you guys about was uh, Heat Killer advertises their 79X0 or 7970 uh, blocks as also being compatible with 7950 uh, blocks or 7950 um, video cards, reference video cards. Now for those of you who know the uh, 7950 cards, been looking at them on the market, seen them in retail stores, know that they have uh, two, um, let's see if I get in the shot here, they have two six pin, six pin uh, ports, but a 7970, has a six pin and an eight pin okay this is important because it these, that six pin and eight pin lets you know that the power delivery uh, circuits are different and that there will be some different things on the PCBs so it'll be a kind of a challenge to make a single heat sink compatible with both boards yeah it, I'm guessing it's doable but it, it'll still be a kind of a crazy block uh, to do that with. So what is the problem here? Well, this is a reference 7950 uh, PCB design from Sapphire. Even though it has coil winding on it after a few months, uh, I have to say it was a pretty good card, very good card actually, and plays all games, all you know, all resolutions up to 1080. Uh, it actually was running my three screens. Uh, by itself for a little while with no problems and I even did iFinity without much problems either even though it struggled a little bit depending on the game by itself uh, went on a second card um, I am not using this in my uh, build now why because the heat killers when I bought two of them thinking uh, well I wonder how it would work seeing as it was uh, 797 and 7950 and they advertise it as such in the stores uh, on the, online, if you go to frozencpu.com and other uh, places, and even on watercool.de, which I believe is their uh, their main website, uh, they advertise as a 7970, 7950 block uh, reference design. As long as they're reference designs, they should fit this block, and that is not true. They they were going off the um, assumption that the 7950s. All of them share the same PCB, reference PCB design as the 7970s. 
which is not so for all of them. Matter of fact, I've only found one so far anywhere around me that does, and that is this card, the uh, MSI, the MSI uh, 7970. If I bring it into the uh, shot here, the MSI 7970. Um, uh, 7970. I'm keep saying 7970. The, the MSI 7950 Twin Frozer uh, card does share a 70 a 7970 PCB design. It has the same 7970 PCB, but it is a 7950. All right, and you can tell from the controllers. Uh, I mean the, uh, the the sockets here for power is the exact same as the 7970. Their uh, power uh, delivery circuit area, which is right around here is just like the 7970 and over here exactly the same so the heat sink um, the block works for this 7950 but it does not work for this reference 7950 this is a real reference 7950 uh, sapphire most 7950s share this design this is the reference design from uh, AMD it's just two six pins and a different power during the circuit so let me tell you what a lot of the different what some of the differences are and it's two very very um big differences as far as trying to fit a block on here and that is this particular area here is uh is not the same on uh, 7970 as a matter of fact this is kind of pushed over uh these are uh designed a little different this whole area is designed differently and it's not so bulky um uh, this area over here I can bring it into focus ah, there we go and let me refocus my camera a bit I'm working with a D3100 it doesn't auto focus in a record, record, recording mode so I'm doing it myself um, so that's a proper pain in the butt too if you uh, look at what I'm doing here <laughs> but anyways uh, there we go The this uh, circuit area here is also designed differently it does not look the same these two areas are important if you want to get a block fitted on here. Everything else is pretty much the same, but these two areas are not. And this is what will stop you if you try to fit a heat killer uh, 7970 slash 7950 or any manufacturer, honestly, 7970 slash 7950 um, block on your on your card. So be careful and, uh, and make sure that if there is a block that says that, they are specifically referring to 7950s that share the 7970 PCB reference design. So if you do not have a 7950 that shares that design, there aren't that many out there, but they are out there. Um, make sure you check your card. If you share it, you will know. That's your. That's how you know right there. If it's a 7950 and it has a uh, Two six, two six pins that's the original 7950 reference design if it has a six pin and an eight pin that's a 7950 that is on a 7970 uh, PCB <laughs> okay so be careful don't want you to spend it these blocks do cost money all right they do cost money that it'll be a shame to see these things show up like they did with me today show up and end up not fitting after you've already waited uh, so long if you already waited so long for the for for them to show up a week or two weeks or whatever wherever however whatever country you stay in uh, however long you have to wait it really sucks when that happens it costs you money it costs you time so please be careful with that and uh, that's what I really want to say about the uh, this uh, block but I got um, another card here and we are ready to go. These are two MSI's. Um, one is a 7950. One is a 7970. And we're going to go ahead and get them into the rig. And but before I do that, I also have to fit some blocks on the motherboard. So I still have a fair amount of work to do. So let me go ahead and get back to work. Thanks for watching. And here we have uh, the Asus P9X79. Pro, not deluxe, pro uh, board. Not there's much difference. And I just finished going ahead and putting on the MIPS uh, limited edition, if they want to call it limited edition, um, 
set uh, block set for this board and it looks pretty sweet actually the colors the shade of blue on the heat sink was kind of bright anyways and uh, this way it takes a lot of that off leaves just enough blue on the board and it'll think it'll fit into the build better this way so uh, just to give you guys a look at what's going on here and uh, let's continue on now I gotta get this board back into the build uh, back into the case and uh, don't forget our heat killers over here get them back in, get them all in the case and it's about that time to start cable things up oh what am I talking about I forgot we gotta put the bisbar bis bar block on don't we let's get to that <laughs> all right it is like four in the morning right now it is a proper mess in here excuse the lighting it's bad that's the computer you see it's all filled up with coolant I did leak test it it's working good you guys are gonna see it running uh, in a little bit here probably in a few days when I get back to recording my bed like I said I'm in a small room right now so yeah it is proper chaos my tools and all that scattered on that little table my bed is covered Covered in computers and I mean in computers, well in crap and uh, some laptops I'm working on. It's somewhere in that mess. Uh, my screens, everything's off. There's you guys again. What's up? Uh, Mac laptop I got from school is my uh, <laughs> secondary computer right now. As this my main baby, Windows 7 baby is a uh, finishing up our maintenance. I just finished the cable management. It is a proper uh it's not my best work but i managed to get the door on somehow <laughs> let's see if i can pan all the way around uh here and show you no i'll just turn the camera um turn the stand around and you can see there's my uh table so you see there's a real real big mess in here so I'm gonna get this cleaned up all right guys and while I am waiting for Tom uh, TTL to start his video which I have him right over here on this screen over here uh, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly show you guys the uh, finished product let's pop the uh, top off this guy and he's not exactly finished. Well, it's never finished. <clears throat> never. Uh, I already have updates in mind for what I'm going to do next with this thing. First and foremost, let's focus on the obvious uh, odd things going on here. This guy. I don't know how he looks on the video. But he is properly, properly uh, not completely upright. <laughs> There's a reason for this. Uh, if you notice, he is only using one mount bracket, and that is because I do have the other one, but this is a 140 millimeter mount that is here stock on the case. Uh, so I have to use an adapter so I can mount one 120 millimeter uh, mount that comes with the reservoir, the Danger Den reservoir, to get it to attach to the case. If I could have mounted the reservoir lower, I could have made it more upright instead of slightly tilted like it is right now. It's kind of annoying. Uh, also, if I actually got a hold of the 140 millimeter rad mounts back months ago when I had the chance, I would have been able to properly mount this. But Danger Den is now closed, uh, unfortunately. Uh, they have shut down, and now I can no longer get a hold of these mounts of the 140 millimeter mounts that would have attached directly to the uh, pre stock. The, mounts that is already there unfortunately so now it looks all kind of weird it's kind of offset so now what I have to do pretty much I have to change the reservoir to uh, maybe uh, just something else uh, primer chill a bits power reservoir is what's coming up uh, in the future for that but this is the uh, rest of the finished product we have our bits power CPU in uh, if you notice there's only one crystal link fitting here and the other one is Tubi because of a goof on my part. I did not order enough of the um, the, crop, the uh, crystal link fittings because I had to order them from a different place. Frozen CPU was out of them 
usually I order all my stuff in one place if I can and I ordered from a different place and I didn't get enough I just had enough for the uh, hit the bread hit the uh, stand so I had enough for this fitting here and I had an, and to get this fitting here um, I will order what I need to, to make that a uh, crystal link fitting as well in the future uh, sometime in the next uh, month or two here the cables coming from the uh, cables coming from the uh, video cards they're not exactly finished yet I want to mount them a little more tighter in here and I will uh, mount them a little tighter in here this works but I've had Coffee, and then we're gonna start. Promise. Thank you, TL. Okay, <laughs> and, I, and um, I had some problems with the cables, and I had two Bits Phoenix extension cables actually uh, break on me as I was trying to get this build up and going. I don't know why that happened, but it was very uh, strange. This one, for instance, was blue, brand new, and when I plugged it into the back area. Plugged it into the video card. I was working around the other cables, and that's when I noticed that one of the pins actually popped out of the extension, which is very weird. I did not even I didn't even cable tie it down. I, I haven't I didn't even touch it or anything like that. I didn't tug on it or nothing like that. I just plugged it in and left it dangling until I got everything else ready. And when I look back over, one of the Mullox pins on the uh, cable actually popped out. So that was rather unfortunate. But to make these even more strange, I don't know if you can see uh, back here. Let me clear it up a bit. You can just see it. Let me get in a little closer. See if you can, if I can really show this to you or not. If you notice, right here. Let's fuck it down in there. Right, I, 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 move down. Right here, this wire, the sleeving for it actually popped. Uh, the sleeving came loose on this uh, on that big fence extension. Uh, very weird uh, problems I have with the extensions that go around. I never usually have these kind of problems at all with it, so it's really strange. Um, but let's take a step back. And my stand is hooked on something. Okay, let's take a step back. And once again, take a look at it as a whole. That is the finished um, bill for now. And we have all that stuff in there. It's running nice and cool. I benched the crap out of it to make sure it is. The top card is 79.70. The bottom card is a 79.50. And it, it looks really nice. It really does. And it, and I, I'm really happy with how it it, get, it came together and I got it all um, got it all situated. Uh, so it it's pretty cool. I had my Blu-ray drive in there. I got everything in there. I can't show you from the front because, like I told you, it's a small ass room. So my bed is actually right there where I would need to put the camera up to show you uh, from the front. But from the front, it's not much going on anyway. It's just my uh, my Blu-ray drive and the uh, lighted up blue fans. And so there you have it. Um, and that's it. That's it for now. And I'll be making some changes. Like I told you, the reservoir is going to change, and I may even change the pump. I may even change the pump. This is the first time I actually got a uh, straight fitting. Hey, Lord. What's up, Ryan? It's the first time I got a straight fitting to uh, actually work for me. That's a straight fitting coming from the uh, coming from the pump all the way to the, uh, the rad there. First time I tried that, it's a damn good thing I didn't get that on camera because it, it was terrible. It was cooling everywhere. It was a <laughs> proper disaster. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Um, but that's all right here and thank you very much for watching I have more updates coming up for you uh, later on later on much later on um, in the next uh, month or two here I'm not gonna be doing anything else right now with the computers I have to move I have to do a lot of things I have to focus on here so Merry Christmas to all you guys and I am out